Hi everyone, Chris the DM here with some exciting news about some big dice. In honor of our return from our hiatus, we're doing some dice giveaways, and the first one starts right now on our Twitter. So head to at RollGayRoleplay on Twitter. The pinned post there will show the three sets of dice that we're giving away, as well as instructions on how to enter. Super simple, like and retweet. Let me tell you about these dice. They are 25 millimeter dice. They're some big boys and they come in three different colors. So all you have to do is like and retweet the post on our Twitter by February 6th. Uh, after that, we're going to draw one person's name at random to win one of the sets of dice. They will have their choice. And the other two sets will be given away at later giveaways on different platforms. So yeah, head to our Twitter, enter that, like, retweet, get yourself some dice. I do have these dice myself, and I have to say, I think it broke my dice curse. So if you've been rolling bad lately, this might be your chance. Now on to our previously on Roll Gay Roleplay. Hogum rides in on a reindeer. Well, 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 if it isn't you, and what have you discovered upon your investigations? That bitch abandoned my ass at the Beaverhampton Expanse. She abandoned you? I escaped because I ran into Vicks in here. He said that the Beaverhampton Expanse has been taken over and that Kringle's dead. I think we should take just one moment to remember the man that that brought so many joy before we killed the lizard men. That's QAnon. Currently burning up the gifts as we speak. As you guys are approaching the workshop, you can see that it looks like... Uh, dystopian video game nightmare on the inside there's no holly what? everything's burnt there's a reindeer on a spit being spun Ooh. around over a fire right now no. is there like a sash with the name on it which one is it uh this one's rodolfo you can tell by the very red nose uh you can see in kringle's throne a dragonborn man sits happy yule miss uh. <laughs> and just because I got boobies doesn't mean that I can't be just like you. Oh my God. Boobies are like the balls of the chest. I'm going to put on the coat. Now that you've got the coat on, there's an addendum in the amendment for the Kringle that says that now you're the new Kringle. Oh, so no. You have to turn into <laughs> Tim Allen. Uh, uh, well, I guess it's only one day a year. Welcome to Roll Gay Roleplay, a real gay real play D&D podcast. I'm Chris the DM, and if I was a Naruto, I would be the Pink Ranger so I could go Super Saiyan and ride a Charizard. Hey, I have a headache. I'm sorry, <laughs> I hate what? This. Go to hell. Uh, hi, my name is Katie. Uh, I play Jet, and I can't ever get the order right, even after making an ass of myself several times about getting it right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Tish is second. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tisha, and I'm going third because fuck Brandon. Oh my god. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brandon. I play Terra Deck, and I wish somebody would fuck Brandon because I haven't had sex in 2020. So, like, that's. <laughs> we're starting over. New year, new hole. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's your turn, Jonathan. I'm. Oh, oh, you didn't even, like, introduce yourself. You just said, because fuck Brandon. <laughs> I said my name. Hi, I'm Ja, and that's my introduction. <laughs> I said my full name, Tisha. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Jonathan. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> and what's our question for the week? Uh, our question for the week is, uh, what is that one New Year's resolution that you make every year? And, like, literally 20 minutes afterwards... It's already becoming next year's New Year's resolution that you're going to break. Mine would be getting in shape. Every year, it's for different reasons. A while ago, it was, I need to get in shape for the apocalypse. Uh, and now it's, I just need to get in shape so that I can carry things up the stairs. And I can guarantee that 2021 is going to be another year of me not being able to carry things up the stairs. <laughs> How did the apocalypse not encourage you enough? Apocalypse <laughs> training, I think, would have been my encouragement. I mean, this is the apocalypse. It's just different. We're all stuck inside on the couch. It's true. Everyone expected zombies. Yeah. We're not preparing for <laughs> battle. We're preparing to just stay inside.
my resolution that I consistently, I've always wanted to know how to do the splits, like to learn how to do the splits. And I will try for a solid week. And like, I don't want to be on the ground. I don't want to keep doing it. It hurts. Last time I did it, I just pushed it too hard and I had to wear a knee brace for six weeks. So oh, I think my body just can't do the splits, but I'm going to keep trying or I'm going to keep saying that I'm going to try. Fair. Uh, mine's actually on a similar note. I wanted to, or at least I always say that I want to get more flexible and whatnot. The splits aren't really an issue, but I want to be able to get uh, comfortably both legs behind my head because... If we're going to be spending, like, a lot longer in quarantine, then, like, you got to learn some new tricks, you know? (gasps) Oh, (laughs) I love that. Marilyn Manson. (laughs) I don't have the money to get a rib removed. (laughs) (laughs) My New Year's resolution that I always fuck up um, is actually really simple. So every year I'm like, hey, Jonathan, don't cuss. You don't need to cuss. You're a whole ass teacher. Cussing is bad. And then it takes one instance of me playing any type of video game or watching The Promised Neverland, and I'm just right back to being a good old sailor. So, yeah, my New Year's resolution every year is don't cuss, and I immediately just fuck it up. Well, you've cursed twice in that explanation, so... Oh, well, (laughs) see, I also just gave up, like... Jan- like literally like 1201 three. hit January 1st and I was just like happy fucking fuck alright never mind <laughs> Mary Chrysler Mary Chrysler Mary Chrysler uh, I don't usually make New Year's resolutions like anything concrete um, just you know more of a you know let's let's look over the past year and the lessons we've learned kind of thing uh, super lame but if I were to make a New Year's resolution I suppose I could harken back to the conversation that we were having earlier in the pre goss stuff um, where it would be to uh, go to NASA, make a speech about why did we stop uh, with one man on the moon? Why haven't we sent the rest of them? (laughs) We don't need men. Men are absolutely garbage. I, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I would never disrespect the moon like that. <laughs> Sick burn, sis. Sick burn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love men. I do love men. My, most of my favorite people are men. I thought you said I love moon. I love moon. I also love the moon. It's pretty. Men are pretty as well. Men can be pretty on the moon. No, men are not pretty. Men are a resource. That's it. That's literally it. I think they're pretty. I think men are tools to be used, like, and that's just it. What are you farming men for? (laughs) I don't know, for my amusement. (laughs) I'm farming men. (laughs) Hallelujah. What? (laughs) Well, I think that all um, three of you men are pretty. And Katie, I also think you're pretty too. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think you're all great people. That's not the same thing as calling That's me pretty. Katie. Like, only a lie. Katie. <laughs> Katie. I don't need to be great. I just need to be pretty. <laughs> Hello. Wow. We're looking for yeah. shallow yeah. compliments. Hello. Please call us pretty. Beauty is only skin deep, and I need to know that my beauty is there. So you could just. If it's not a shallow compliment, I'm not going to accept it. <laughs> Hey, too deep for me right now. If you could just stay on the surface. (laughs) Thank you. So it's good to know we're not going to do any of those things that we said. So we can just kind of cross those off our list. Hello. Next challenge. It's great to be honest for once. That Pandora's box is just wide open. (laughs) Wait, whose box? (laughs) (laughs) Brandon's looking for any box at this point. Where's the box? Where? The box. (laughs) Well, we're back. It's 2021. We made it, guys. Yay. Uh, everyone ding, give ding, us ding. A, a round of applause. Yeah, a round of <laughs> literally. Oh my God. Quite, let me put my phone on silent because apparently I'm just awful. Yeah. <laughs> so we last left off at the Beaverhampton Expanse still. Uh, you all have just saved Yule Mist or at least killed Bad Kringle. And now Hogum is wearing the Kringle jacket. He's going to become Kringle. Eve and Benny have just changed back from... Gilbert Feinstein and Fanny Yokely. And we all just became level 15. Close. <laughs> there was a there was a there was a level up that happened. 
So what level is our, our Eve, Jet, and Tara then? I'm pretty sure we're 10. We should all be 10, yeah. You, you guys are 10, and then Benny is 11, right? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Is there any grand changes that happened in that that we should know about? Yes. Yeah? Well, we still already have plus four uh, proficiency bonus from level nine. But uh, as level 10, Tara gets her school of illusion stuff. Ooh. Oh. So now if you try to hit me, it's going to be harder. I'll explain it later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you don't hit me, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> oh, I got a new feat. Okay. Lucky. So I'm about to be a big old asshole. I'm just letting you know. Like, everything is geared towards Eve being an asshole. Um, but Lucky, it says, you have inexplicable luck that seems to kick in just at the right moment. I have three luck points. Whenever you make an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw, you can spend one luck point roll, uh, one luck point to roll an additional d20. You can choose to spend one of your luck points after you roll the die, uh, but, before the, uh, but before the outcome is determined. So I can just roll uh, or spend it. You choose which the d20s is used for the attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. Basically, yeah, I can just change fate for myself. Wow. After a long... And I get all three luck points back after a long rest. Okay. Nice. So these whole person's about wow. to be real pretty. Oh. <laughs> Guys. Yep. I get to change... I get to pick another fighting style. It's like, do I want to get good at great weapon fighting which is two weapons but i already am good at two weapon fighting can i get double good at two weapon fighting so yeah i think you get two great weapons in one hand or per hand in one hand per hand she just hold them between your fingers yeah yeah you grow another arm hold on i'm looking it up now great weapon fighting five okay so i completely made that up apparently (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> um, the great weapon fighting style allows you to re-roll any one or two on the die and we must use a new result oh okay so yeah you can just re-roll your ones and twos whenever you do damage okay. oh literally it says why is the great weapon fighting style a bad choice like <laughs> <laughs> yes I will do Ooh, hurler it's a homebrew oh, okay it's not vomiting it's after throw the weapon <laughs> <laughs> you throw up a sword. You yeah. yarf on someone. I will go defense. I will get extra defense just because I got a plus one to my bonus AC. Okay. Because I mean, you're the one that runs up, better. so makes sense. We can't all be Benny. Speaking of, I know Benny at level 11. Anything different then? Whack ass. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just remembered that we were supposed to do that. So I'm currently deciding. I think I just give her another level... I don't, she doesn't need ability score improvement, so I'm just going to give her a level in Druid. And what does she get at level four Druid? Um, never mind, it's another ability score improvement. Or I could take a feat. All right, I'm going to take a Druid feat. Uh, I'm going to take Lucky. Shit, that's three characters that have Lucky now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just... Okay. Good luck, oh, Chris. Goodness. I, I think I'm, I think I'm okay. I've, I've been really researching what I want to do to really do some damage to you guys. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? I feel like that uh, Skinner fight was really fair. <laughs> Super fair. Absolutely. <laughs> Not one-sided at all. So yeah, now that we've got everyone leveled up and where they should be, uh, we can pick up back at the Beaverhampton Expanse. You can be in Kringle Hogum's new workshop. Hogum is there. Joyle's ashes are there. We'll, we'll say you guys had a long rest and helped clean up the Beaverhampton Expanse to de-skinner it. To, uns- to skin it? <laughs> Unjoyle it. To make it less <laughs> apocalyptic and more jolly. Is it possible that like I can cleanse this place? Yeah. How, how, how would you cleanse it in the name of Yonsei? Burn it down. Okay, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, who saw that coming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have asked at all. I was thinking sage, not fire. No, My bad. cleanse it in holy fire <laughs> of Yonce. It's... Are you going to help rebuild it? No. Because oh, uh, I know your MO. It's burn and run. It's, it's, that's literally Hogum's job. He has... The, is it? He has the magic workshop. He has the magic of Kringle now. He can just rebuild his own workshop. Is that how that works? Carpenter Kringle, you know. Yes. 
So, or is this like a Santa Claus situation? Is it possible that I can just make the preparations to burn this place down? Sure. There's ice walls and things you have to burn too. So, I think all of us are gonna probably say no. Um. So not not to be just a, a super enabler, but why don't we like uh just prep the area so that way only what you want to burn burns. Uh, I can bring sandbags to the outer edges. Only the uh, areas of this workshop that have been defiled by uh, not Kringle, Kringle, not Kringle. Uh, you know what we could do? We could have a bonfire and roast some marshmallows and, and maybe some tofu cubes. Then how can I pray to Yance? Oh, you want to pray to Yance? Interesting. Uh, you could do it while we're roasting marshmallows. And this workshop is burning down to the ground, right? Yeah, I'm fair with. I'm I'm cool with that. Everybody else? Uh, have we thought about like bleach first? Uh, why? Just a quick question. Uh, why? Why are we burning down this man's house? Uh, because it was defiled by that thing that was Kringle, but not Kringle Kringle, and we need to offer this place a second chance to uh, regain its glory uh, through a blessing of Yonce. So it will die like the phoenix of old and re- be reborn again in the name of Yonce. Oh, so we're, we're rebuilding it after. Uh, no, I'm not. No. <laughs> oh, so you don't want it to be reborn like a phoenix. You want it to, to burn down and not come back. I would like for whoever it's job it is that's not mine to rebuild this place after I burn it down. Oh, if it's not your job to rebuild it, why is it your job to burn it down? Uh, in the name of Yonce, that's what I do. So the name of Yonce doesn't build, build things or help? No, uh, unless it's a church. And I don't think that uh, Hogum Kringle Kringle, not Kringle, but Hogum, would approve of me taking over this place in the name of Yonce. But I will burn it down because so it was completely defiled by... Uh, not Kringle, Kringle, not Kringle. If we built a small section that could be a church for Yonce, would that be acceptable? I look over at Hogum. Oh, hell no. (laughs) So, Hogum, are you saying that you would prefer Kringle, Kogum, Kogum? Are you sure that you would not like for me to burn this dreadful place down to the ground? Look, can't we just... If you're gonna tear it down, we gotta rebuild it. No, but I can burn it down and give you my blessing. I don't want your blessing. I just want some place to stay when I'm up here. Eve looks over at Betty. Um, yeah, I mean, does any of it really matter in the long run? Like, I, you stay here, you you fill the hearts of people... Um, you can sleep wherever you want, right? I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be right here. Yes, yes, quite. I'm sure that on your adventures uh, every year on December the 25th, you have uh, quite new friends that would be able to inhabit your, uh, uh, that would be able to um, um, give you dwellings while your place was being rebuilt by the people that you uh, hire to rebuild your workshop. That's not me or my compatriots. Maybe we can come to a compromise. Uh, Jet, uh, Tara, uh, you seem to not be super for burning this down, but also the, the, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I feel really uncomfortable and dirty um, with whatever happened. So I'm down for <laughs> for burning it. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you all feel um or if you have any other alternatives that would satiate everyone's needs. Well, there is a Tara. Uh, whenever a place has been defiled, what does the synagogue do? Oh, uh, we leave it behind and never go back. It's like it's like a thing where you just pretend your problems don't exist and then they don't. I don't oh, need, I don't need therapy. <laughs> 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 Oh. Uh, uh, um, oh. oh, okay, okay. That is a much different approach uh, from the Church of Yonce. Hogum, I will say this. <clears throat> if you were to abandon this place and pretend like it never existed and maybe built a new workshop, 
that would fall in line with the church of the, the, the synagogue, which would be um, satiating the needs of at least one of our deities. Why don't we, why don't we um, grab those ashes of that weird guy um, that are laying there and we start a fire with them and we can have a long rest where we uh, maybe ask Hogan some questions about what the fuck is going on. Alright, I can build a new place. That's fine. We got time before next year. Yeah, you can build the workshop. That's fine. And then we can talk about, well, what what all happened over s'mores and some, my personal favorite, some tofu cubes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is just what I want on my marshmallows. <laughs> does, mm. does, does Kringle Ogum does Kringle Ogum eat tofu? I mean, I think Kringle Hogum eats everything. Oh, that's true. I was gonna, I was gonna say the other more commonly uh, thing used thing that you cook over fire, but then it just took me a while to like figure out how to say it properly. Corn. Yeah, corn. That's what it was. Hot dogs. Yeah. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Hot dog. Um, yeah. Hot dogs. So, let's 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 fire up some hot dogs. Hot dogs. I'm gonna yes. say hot that dogs. Eve is going to begin the ceremony of the burning. Um, and so Eve probably won't be hearing this conversation. Would that be clear? Or That's fine. You're just going around setting up little like pyres ready to light up? Yeah, ready to torch it. Uh, so Eve goes back up, goes back to an area, uh, changes into the robes of Yonce, which is just her Coachella outfit, um, the yellow crop and the um, <laughs> blue jean jorts. And <laughs> he begins the ritual of burning this bad boy to the ground. Benny brings okay. out some marshmallows. Uh, anyone want to loot a body first? Uh, Jet would like to loot a body, and she's going to tuck away her, like, disinfecting tools. Because, like, obviously we're not cleaning anything. We're just burning it to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Joel seemed more of a physically soiling. <laughs> Jet has rubber gloves on, like, oh, we're not? No. Okay. Some waiters, like... <laughs> <laughs> She's ready to hoarders clean. With uh, Joyle's ashes on the ground, you can see, after Hogan lifted up the coat, you can see that Joyle left behind a few things. Uh, there's an amulet, there are some bracers, and there is a sword. So let me get those to you, Katie. Because Joyle was given by our good friend Mitch at Homebrew 5e... Uh, Joyle was given some magic items when we played on the Patreon episode, so you're going to get those items, too. Yes. I forgot completely, and Mitchell messaged me, and he's like, here, this is what the loot is. Don't, don't forget. Like, okay, uh, okay. well. <laughs> so thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> on D&D Beyond, you can look up Flame Tongue Longsword. Okay. Wait, it's a longsword, so is that a two-handed or a one-handed weapon? It's a two-handed or one-handed. Oh, but it has additional damage, so now Katie can start beefing up that damage. Yes, because I feel really stupid just being like, I'm just going to get really close and just hit them, and I can't do anything. You're beefing, up, I do. You're beefing up Katie's damage. Does that mean you're going to try to actually start killing us now? Because I'm, like, I'm ready for the adventure. Uh, yes, you guys are going to be in for a ride coming up. Maybe not this episode, but def maybe. Maybe. Did you, did you say flame-tailed longsword? flame Tongue. tongue. While the pirates are being set up and Jet's looting, I feel like Tara's looking around, like, to see if there's any gifts kind of chilling. Mostly she's looking for, like, a weapon section. You want a weapon section for gifts? Yeah, like basic What type of upgrade of a weapon do you need? I'm looking for specifically ten short swords, and I don't need questions. I'm going to get my D10 out, and I'm going to see how many short swords you find. (laughs) Oh, I should have said 20. Should have said 20. I'll do a 20. I'll make it fair. Yeah. How many short swords does Tara find? Actually, you know what? You should probably roll this. <gasps> okay, D20. Don't let me down. Three. Fuck. Well, I got a two, so you got higher than me. <laughs> okay, great. I'll take three, I guess. You got three. That worked out. Sweet. I know I shouldn't ask questions, but I kind of want to ask questions. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, what you doing, sis? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about how those pyres go. <laughs> Um, yeah, so definitely Eve is, like, outside, um, with, 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 uh, a whole bunch of, like, wooden things. 
setting it up. And he has the help of Angelica as well. Very nice. About how long would it take me to be fully ready to burn things down? I mean, with Angelica's help, I say you can and, do it in about 20, 30 minutes. Okay. So, um, as everyone comes outside... Oh, no. So after, 20, after, after 30 minutes, I then build, like, a little igloo for the, uh, for the other ones to, like, be in while they talk to Hogan. Very nice. Little chimney in it so the fire can come out through, smoke through it. No, I don't build a chimney. I just want them to, like, smoke and, like... Just smoke in Just there. smoke in there. I feel like we're no, I put a little dirtier. chimney. <laughs> <laughs> um, I use some of, like, Randolph's, like, bones as, like, a pyre. Nice. So it kind of smells like venison. Yeah. Like, okay. Good for you. Um, and then if they start coming out, they see, like, Eve has a witch bolt ready to, like, strike the match. Perfect. I guess as the fire is about to be lit or as going, you guys can talk to Hogum and figure out what your next step is from here. Benny would be sitting next to Hogum. Um... And offering him a tofu s'more. Uh, he will eat it in one bite for sure. Okay. And then she goes, um, so, you know, I know that you uh, took off with Anamik. That was kind of cool, right? Um, sh- she's pretty nice. Um, you know, there, there are some weird things that happened. Uh, I know that you said they knew that about some of them, but who do you think um, is trying to frame her? Who's, who's trying to frame Anamik? Um, for all this stuff. What do you mean framed by Benny? You were there with Mara, right? She was M, right? Um, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, okay, so who's who's possibly pretending to be on a meek? Then, um, who's pretending to be her to make us think that she's trying to hurt us? Anamik isn't just trying to hurt you guys. She was trying to watch God's clash. You're just getting in the way. She doesn't care about this world. She knows that Meek is powerful. And she wants Meek to escape the shallow so the gods will clash. Yeah, but I mean, that's that's kind of hard to believe because, you know, she gave me this book and I had a couple talks about how Meek isn't really real and, you know, there are religions that... They are good and bad and, and, and they don't, but they don't really. Right. Can I, uh, let me see the book, Benny. Hogum holds out his hand. Uh, uh, um, okay. So Benny grabs uh, her book, uh, also pulls out little Della and says, ah, make some s'mores if you want to, little Della. And uh, hands the Thanks. book to, hands the book to Hogum. All right. Hogum is going to take the book and throw it towards Eve and says, Burn it, Eve. What? <laughs> no. Benny, it's not real. What? What do you mean? I know you want her to be good and on your side, but she's not on our side. You're saying that, that she was just pretending to be my friend and she gave me this book to, to trick me? Or, like, why else would she do that? She wanted you to not get in the way. So, everything I read in that book was not real? Probably. If I could read, I would tell you. Um, (laughs) so... We know Meek is real. And the book said Meek isn't real, right? Right. So maybe the book is lying... And then maybe there are some religions that actually do good for people? Of course. There's good religions. The religion of the religion of of Yonce is actually helping people and not just irrelevant. It's a lot of burning to be helping people. But (laughs) you'll have to ask Eve about Yonce. Eve knows about Yonce. You can trust in his knowledge on the subject. Oh God, I've been I've been letting Eve slip out of the religion for so long. Holy shit! Okay, um, yeah, dude, I'm just gonna. And she just shoves four s'mores, four tofu s'mores in her mouth. Little Dilla's also gonna try and shove a full s'more in his mouth, but his mouth's not big enough. He's just got a whole bunch of marshmallow <laughs> on his face. Ah! Ah! 
just playing in Marshmallow. So, uh, side adventure aside, I guess, what's our next move? Well, she's on me because going to lay low for a while and know that she's exposed. But her diary said that the next step, she's trying to take out a god who lives in this world. Um, Benny, do you still have the compass? Um, no. Yeah, I, uh, for some reason decided to give that up. I don't remember doing it, but apparently I did do that. Well, now is the time to follow it, because that is where Anamik is heading next. She's going to try to take oh. out an actual god. Um, but we were okay. heading to okay. the four, the, the queendom, the four queens, because there was some stuff going on. I think Anamik is dangerous one right now. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, we did, we did after all kill um, Flint. We, I say we, royal we, right? <laughs> royal we. <laughs> Could we just send a letter to the queen somehow? I do have a lot of presents to drop off. I can drop off a note. Yeah, but we don't know who the bad queen is, do we? No, it didn't say in her diary. It only said queen, so I don't know which of the five is Was it our actually queen? bad. It had to have been our queen, yeah? Yeah, I don't know. Ever, I would hope we not. We haven't met her, though, I thought. No, you haven't met the Irish-speaking <laughs> three-piece oh, suit oh, with Lord. lit... Did you say Irish speaking like it's a different language? Yeah. I- you know what? That's fair. That's fair. I did watch Dairy Girls recently, and it took me a while to it's understand. <laughs> I watched it with subtitles. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because that's the accent that Patreon decided our queen is going to be. Ooh. The accent luck, is an Chris. Irish accent. <laughs> nice. So if we sent a letter and got the queens to to turn on each other, wouldn't that create like a like a a sense of insecurity, not trusting each other, maybe cause a war? Could be. Yeah, I, I don't know if we want the queens turning on each other quite yet. I mean, Anamik is here to cause chaos and watch gods clash. She can totally t- make the queens turn on each other and cause the same thing. Okay, well, I um have an idea. Uh, I have a speaking stone. Uh, that we can talk to Loxif with. And Loxif is on his way to the Queendom. I think we were supposed to meet him there. Yeah, okay. I can only send... I have the setting set to one message a day, unlimited words. Okay. What, uh, maybe just let him know that Anamik is, uh, trying to foil all the plans? And does he even know who Anamik is? I don't know. Sent, yeah, because Lox have sent Hogum to be with Anamik. Like, Lox have and Hogum have been working in tandem on this. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, okay, so I think Benny would talk to the rest of the crew and try to figure out what we should send to Lox if, to let him know that we're going after Anamik, that Anamik uh, abandoned Hogum um, at... The Beaverhampton Expanse. That is such a good name for a town, by the way. Yeah, it is. I don't know who came up with it, but it was really good. Yes, it was really good, Tisha. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think that I think that Benny would be getting with everybody and saying, "Hey, how do we? How do we send this message to Loxif to let him know what's up and have him like?" Looking into the queens, knowing one is is in uh, working in tangent with uh, Mayak. Well, okay, I uh, like to do a, a bit of a compliment sandwich. So maybe like tell him that his hair looks good, and then one of the queens is evil, and then like he has a glow about him today. Um. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Uh, I think that we're missing a some information in there like maybe it can be like uh, a quarter pounder with cheese uh where it's like a uh, sandwich bread and then the the meat of it and then maybe some extra like garnish and then more sandwich bread and then more meat and then more uh compliments it sounds like you definitely know what a quarter pounder or, is or or if you want to call it a royale with cheese we could do that too oh my god yeah, Jet's just like 
uh, upset because Benny has been giving her the idea that like Mayak isn't a big deal, but if Mayak attacked Buble Bay and her brother is there, she's just like, I-, I need to get you a port like ASAP. We took all this time. I don't see any liquid water anywhere near here. <laughs> and I need to talk to my brother, especially if Mayak is a real god that I need to be worried about. I can understand your distress. Uh, I apologize for that um, and will somehow find a way to make it up to you, maybe? I will say that, like, panic. I am panicking. I'm not stressed. I, this is, this is a panic, Betty. Okay, okay, okay. Um, uh, okay, so we'll just, we'll just send, we'll just send lots of a, a note and then we'll, 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 we'll go from there. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that Mayak doesn't, has not destroyed your, your village. I mean, like, wait, Mayak did destroy your village. We'll make sure that your brother's okay. Mm. Look, you can keep Mayak in the shallow as long as you maintain the disco stick. Anamika's gonna come after the disco stick. Uh, Tara tucks it behind her back. <laughs> so Benny would say, "Okay, so what we need to, so what we need to do is let's send this message, and it's gonna say, hey, Loxif, uh, I really like your, uh, your hair today. Uh, I'm sure it looks nice, no matter whatever you did to it, even though I can't see it. Uh, but uh, one of the queens is evil. We're not coming after you." Uh, we're not going to meet you with the, at the King Queendom. Uh, we are going after, uh, f- first probably to make sure Jet's brother is okay. Uh, you probably, I don't know if you know who Jet is. I'm sure we've talked about it, but, and then second, we're going to go after, uh, Anamik because she left Hogum at the Beaverhampton Expanse and she's like, she's doing some bad stuff. Uh, and also, uh, I the color purple is a very good choice. People who like the color purple are typically very nice and lovely people. Uh and then also uh we've made some big mistakes. <laughs> but you're awesome. Okay, thanks. Bye. And then she sends a message. That was quite a sandwich. Really really making use of those unlimited words. <laughs> Thank you. Uh okay. <laughs> When, when Benny said that, it was just like that thing from Arrested Development where it's like, I've made a terrible mistake. Yes. <laughs> All right. We can have your message be marked as read from Loxif. And let's see. We've got, you're not coming to join him. You know one of the queens is evil. You're going after Anamik. It's basically what you're telling him, right? Yeah. Well, we're telling him also that we're going to check on Jet's brother as well. Okay. Yeah. In Buble Bay. Okay. Wait, so are we going after Anamik or are we going to Buble Bay? We can I do that in whatever order we need to, but I feel like Jet is set on Buble Bay from what it sounds like. I don't need to go to Buble Bay. I just need to get to a port to talk to someone who could get me in touch with any letters that I might be waiting for. Oh, okay. Hogan will tell you that uh, you're going to have to travel by ship to find Yidus. And it's a long journey. Like, you're going to be at sea for at least a week, but you have to find a ship first. So you're going to have to go to a port anyway in order to find somebody with a ship. Okay. Can we just go back to well, Tradesville or whatever it's called? Shrekswork Bay? Yeah, Eve has that ring of teleportation. Yeah, you can go to any port city that you have been to before, really. So if you want to go back to the murder house, you can go there. Uh, but there's probably not a ship there. So maybe don't... Yeah, pick... Shrekswork Bay makes sense. Hey, Eve, light it up and wrap it up. We're going over to Horace Bay or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> you hear Eve, like, whispering uh, whispering uh, the chants of Yonce, and the workshop is burning. Uh, metal bars and shit are, like, falling to the ground, and it's beautiful. Um... Eve gets up and says, uh, so, uh, yes, where are we, where are we headed to this time? Uh, I, I think the na- it's, is it Hookersburg? What's the... Uh, it's- also, I fully support sex workers, and it is a valid industry. <laughs> it's called Shrekswork Bay. Uh, remember Sally was there. Um. Oh, you met Sally! <laughs> Is Sally and Hogum, are they like father, I mean, like mother and son? Is that the mom? 
Oh, shit. <laughs> Yes. Oh, because Hogan's mom is a hoe. <gasps> Can I tell you I'm so proud of a callback from like the first 10 minutes of episode one? Yes. Uh, hi, my mom's name is Sally. And uh, one time she was going on a trip and I gave her 100 tampons and asked her if that would be enough. And uh, she was going to be gone for like five days. <laughs> and she was like, no, it takes me like 10 of these tied together. <laughs> You know Sally uses them in a group. Oh my god. <laughs> Gotta buy them in bulk. Um, um, so Eve <laughs> is repulsed. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Eve says, well, uh, well, it seems that we are on our way to go visit her yet again. Um, would you like to impart some words upon us that we may give to her? Uh, yeah. Can you give her a gift for me? Uh, yes. I do think that uh, and I push, I push Tara up, and I say, Tara will hold on to the gift. Oh, yeah, as long as I don't have to touch it at all or smell it, I will totally bring it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. Hogan will uh, turn around and find a gift. Oh, I guess you guys burnt the workshop. Well. <laughs> We're in the process of burning it. Hogan will run into the burning workshop and grab the one gift that he needs and then run the fuck back out. <laughs> and it'll be a wrapped present that says mom on the tag Aww. blue present white ribbon tied particularly nicely and he'll just hand that to you Tara thanks just tell her it's from her 13th oldest oh great yeah I don't really know uh, you or her or anything that's happening so sure okay thanks okay bye <laughs> are you guys like leaving now or do you guys want to have more tofu s'mores? I think that I'm I'm ready. Yeah, okay. Jet's gonna stress eat a little more, and then she's gonna be ready to go. It's just s'mores and tofu. I am going to begin uh, using my teleportation ring. Okay. Benny's gonna give Hogum one big, one last big hug. Benny. Hogum, I miss you so much. Hopefully, uh, you can come back sometime and visit us. I'll be back. I promise. Eve, come here. Give me a hug. Eve has already gotten into the portal. <laughs> we don't even know if the portal was successful. Yeah. Tara also steps through the portal and goes, uh, Eve gives her best. No, no, I don't. <laughs> Before we get started with the rest of our story, I want to say a quick thank you to Mark for ro- uh, reprising the role of Hogan once again for this episode. We really appreciate it, babe. And we look forward to seeing Hogan again in hopefully a Patreon or at least by next Yule Miss. Now that I have thanked my husband, it is time to thank some new Patreon members. And by new, I mean our first three Patreon members from December. Uh, you guys have really shown up in the last month and a half on our Patreon, and that is super cool. So I have a lot of names that I need to say, but we're going to do it three at a time because I want to stay a little bit intimate. And I really do appreciate each individual support. So... I want to say thank you to Joshua, thank you to Logan, and thank you to my dear friend Maureen. Your support means the world to us, and we are a functioning podcast because of our patrons. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and we hope that you like the dice and all the extra episodes and the bonus stuff and the polls that we should put up there. Yeah, if you haven't checked out our Patreon, go do that. It's Patreon. Uh, Just search Roll Game Roleplay. We show up right away. Now, before we get back to our episode, here's a word from our friends at The Room Where It Happened. The Room Where It Happened is an actual play podcast built on communal world building and having fun with friends. Currently, we're exploring a world called The Bleed, a sci-fi setting, pulling elements from westerns and setting a space version of our home of Appalachia. It's a place still recovering from conflict, where resources and labor are less exports and more things to be taken for the more prosperous parts of the galaxy, with little thought given to those it is taken from. The Bleed is a place where people find strength in each other and do what is needed to make ends meet, whether or not the means are strictly legal. It's a place where the objects of work and war are beginning to wake up and decide to take their destiny into their own metaphorical hands. So join us as we follow a found family, 
as they search for that next job and maybe something a little deeper too. You can find new episodes every Monday on Spotify or your podcatcher of choice. Just search for The Room Where It Happened and check us out on Twitter at RoomWherePod. Uh, Eve, roll for the teleportation ring just to make sure you guys get close by. Oh, I rolled a 97. Woohoo! You can, you can pick the room you want to be in, shit. <laughs> um, I just want us to be right outside of Sally's headquarters. Okay. That's perfect. While we're doing that, I want to... Uh, Jet, did you see what your new items give you? Because we didn't even talk about that. Ah, uh, da da Um... So I, yes, I have a sword that catches on fire, a circlet of dragon breath that I assume. Ooh. Yeah, that's something you can sell. Uh, it's dragonborn specific, but. That's cool. And then my bracers of opportunity, you have an advantage on your attack rolls when making an opportunity attack. On a hit, the creature takes an exact, ooh, ooh, that's good. Takes an additional D8 force damage. So not only does Jet have one extra <laughs> One extra armor point from upgrading. All of the cool stuff comes from uh, looting Joyle's ashes. Yeah, you've got a new longsword that does extra damage and bracers that will do extra damage, so. Oh, yeah, baby. I'm ready to get in close to something and then die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in, in a blaze of glory. <laughs> oh, awesome. All right, you can arrive in Shrekswork Bay just outside of Sally's headquarters. I'm guessing you don't knock. You just walk in, right? I feel like we should knock with her business. Someone's getting a Sally ride. No. Yeah, if you want to do a perception check, I can tell you what you hear specifically. Nope. I'm <laughs> I fingers in ears knocking with my elbow on the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I will say Jet has her hands up like uh, like blinders for horses so they don't get nervous. She doesn't have any peripheral vision right now. <laughs> Do you do you give morning briefs or morning boxers? <laughs> uh, <Yikes. laughs> uh, a gentleman that Jet and Tara you recognize from the bar, uh, an an elder gentleman walks out of Sally's place, still putting his arm in his sleeve, uh, and goes right back to that dive bar. And Sally comes out. She goes, "Oh, you guys are back! Thanks for taking care of that uh my trade issue." I appreciate it. Is there a way I can mm, repay you? And she slaps her inner thighs again. (laughs) Who does that? (laughs) Is that not how is that not how lesbians work? You don't just like slap your inner thighs at each other. (laughs) I don't know. It's been so long. I'm not even sure if I can call myself a lesbian anymore. (laughs) Just try it next time. Let me know how it works. I will. I'll let you know. Next time I go out at a bar. how human beings work just slapping my thighs <laughs> my in, the inside of my upper thigh yeah the... <laughs> i'll let you know i'll do it next time cool thank you <laughs> the cargo pants uh I, tara just holds out the box to her oh what's this uh we met your little boy and by little boy i mean very large boy oh which one did you meet uh there's uh 16 not how many were there which which number one number Oh, I lost count. They just drop out and walk away. I, I think his name was Hogam. Oh, Hoagie, my little gum gum. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> he's a secret agent, you know. Don't tell nobody. He's actually, uh, he's Kringle now. So. Oh, he's Kringle now. Look at my little gum gum delivering gifts to all the peoples of the world. That's so sweet. Yeah, you're his first gift delivery. Congrats. Oh. Oh, I'm going to open it now. You, oh, wait. She's going to open her gift. I was going to, yeah, so it's going to be lingerie then. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be new pieces of lingerie. It's all going to be camouflage. Oh, man. But it's going to be that blue camouflage that's, like, digital looking. (sighs) And it's going to have openings where it should have coverings. And coverings where it should have openings. Oh, so it's totally appropriate. It's got, like, a, it's a cookie monster pattern. I just Googled pink camo lingerie because I thought that was the direction that they were going in. 
A, all the models are white. <laughs> B, <laughs> it's really ugly. I think Katie was doing some independent research, some independent horny research. Katie's like, lingerie, hang on. I have a license to be horny on Maine. Let's, p- let's pick out lingerie for an orc woman, please. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, God. My thought was that it's a muma, but it has four holes in it, so it's like boo boo back front. Jesus. I imagine there's a note that's like, uh, to cover up your cookies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, my boy always did like cookies. I, why do we just... Jet's turning oh, green. Why did this podcast get so horny all of a sudden? Why are we looking at pictures of lingerie? <laughs> I mean, it's pink camo lingerie. That's not very horny for anybody involved. I think that they're all terrible. Would I laugh at somebody wearing them? Yes. Would things still happen? Probably. <laughs> oh, you're wearing that? I am going to take that off of you. Yeah. Maybe you'd have to cover yourself in deer piss first. It- I hate them. Uh, okay, so yeah, uh, Sally has her new lingerie. It's horrifying. It's horrifying, and she's going to immediately change in front of you Kay. to put it on. Tara no. turns around and walks away. Are we leaving? Are we done here? Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Benny's very upset. Well, she's clothed now. She doesn't take her long to put on. She's very good at getting clothes on and off. Like, she's a pro at it now. I feel like saying she's clothed now is an overstatement. She is horrified. She's more covered than naked. Okay, still leaving. Tara's heading towards a weapon shop. Is there a weapon shop? Oh, you need more short swords? Yes. Sure. (laughs) Yeah, there's a weapon shop. I just want to, I want to buy seven short swords. Wait, wait, are they actually swords? Or are they swords? Wink, 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 wink. Oh, that's a good question. Oh, did you are just say swords? wink? Wink, wink. It depends on which shop you go into. Weapons <laughs> or weapons? I'm going to the one without quotation marks around the word weapons. <laughs> the one that's not spelled with dildos. Got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, then you have, a, you have a weapon shop. You can purchase some short swords. Let me look up what the price of a short sword is. I know you got the cash, so... Yeah, I'm still lugging around a sack of 19,000 gold. <laughs> well, then they're a thousand apiece. Oh, God. No, they're... I don't think short swords are very expensive. Yeah, they're 10 gold pieces a piece for a short sword. Okay. I will definitely do the math to some track. 20 out. or 10 of them is 20 pounds, just an FYI. Oh, and how much does this 19,000 gold bag weigh? That I've been carrying for the past. Month. I don't know. Hulgum carried a sled for like six episodes, and I didn't know it all. <laughs> I swear there was a point like thirty in, and he's like, "I have a ladder." What? <laughs> Hulgum is just like that tinker man. You've got your short swords. Uh, the merchant is uh, nothing you need to worry about. He's unimpressive and doesn't need a voice. Great. We don't need to see either. Tara just fucking drops some cash and leaves. Cool. You just wanted short swords. That's it. Yeah, that's okay. It. I feel like now she's got like a very uh, Titania fairy tale, like a yes. skirt made out of swords going on. Oh, <laughs> I'm nice. <thinking> that. <laughs> Tara's boobs get bigger every chapter, <laughs> and no one knows why. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. So, anyone else want to purchase anything or sell uh, anything? Yeah, Jet wants to get rid of that circlet of dragon breath. She okay. is made of rocks, not made out of fire. If you don't have your own gold, Tara is just going to hand you this enormous bag that you can carry forever. Uh, I need to sell it. I'd be wondering how much money I get for it. Oh, I am looking up. It is a rare item. So you're looking at 5,000 gold is for a rare item. Ooh. I mean, not to be that person that plays video games and keeps every single item until the very end and then never uses it, but... <laughs> what if we meet a dragonborn? What if we meet a dragonborn? Uh, we can also go to a bar and I can get drunk and uh, bet this in a match. <laughs> I like that. That idea sounds lovely. Why don't we go to the bar that... Is the least dildo ish. It, maybe it's called Dildon't. Ah, <laughs> uh, the Dildon't bar. Clothing optional. <laughs> There's a box for dildos outside. 
Uh, the one bar that was in Shrek's Work Bay that did not have a sexual overtone to it was the one that the dive bar that Jet and Tara have previously been in. So you can enter there again if you'd like. And then exit it and then enter it. And Jet, yeah, if you want to sell that uh, circlet, I will give you exactly what a rare item cost is. I'll give you 5K for it. Or we could try and start a fight club. Yeah, or we can do fight club. <laughs> we could see who will kill each other for this fucking necklace. <laughs> circle it whatever i need uh, information but it's also going to give jet an opportunity to go back into that bar to see if um the message has been received or replied to true yeah that's a good point yeah i think jet's gonna go to the bar she's just gonna leave the circlet for now um and then i can make bad decisions later okay cool you can enter the bar there is a different bartender bartender there today but he has the same voice, because that's what's happening. Hey, rad. And, uh, yeah. Welcome to the Dill Don't. How, uh, can I get you anything? Double bubble? Double bubble special? Triple bubble? Yeah, can I get a, a sparkling water, hold the water? Yes. <laughs> and the bartender grabs two straws, sticks them in her nostrils, and just blows in your face. A, a Tara just turns around and walks out of the bar. <laughs> All spark- That's all sparkle, babe. This was a mistake. <laughs> all sparkle. I also shot like snot on my microphone, so hang on a second. <laughs> Obviously, Bubble okay. Boy was an entrepreneur and was the first soda stream. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I guess Tara just turns back to the group and just like shrugs, like I don't know what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> so I just bit my face. Anything else to actually drink? And the uh, bartender wipes his nose. Uh, yeah, I'll take uh, two of your cheapest beers. Perfect. Goes ahead and pulls out two mugs, puts it on the counter, puts some beer in there, tosses it over to you. Yep, Tara plugs her nose, uh, sorry, Jet plugs her nose, drinks both of them. I mean, they're not the best tasting. Wow. Yep. Uh, are there any, uh, letters? Uh, oh, wait, no, we used that, um, Tumblr code, right? We did. We did. My favorite thing was someone just being like, yo, I had like a visceral flashback. I'm like, yes, yes. It's like every time I hear the Supernatural theme song, I'm like, okay. Uh, all right. Jet's going to be like, uh, all right. I like your, uh, I like your shoelaces. Thanks. I stole them from the president. He remembered. Yay. <laughs> any, any letters addressed? Well, let me see Waiting. what I got. Who are you looking for? What's your name? Jet. Hang on. Rock. And he'll uh, go in back, and he'll come back and say, I've got no news, but I can tell you that your letter that was sent has been passed around already. So we're getting there. I'd say you'll be informed soon, hopefully. But the letter's been passed through. All right. Can I get two more drinks, please? Yeah. You waiting for some bad news? Yep. And the bartender will give you two more drinks, pass them to you, and say, look, on the house, seem upset. If your friends want an actual drink, they can get one. Or I can just keep blowing in their faces. I'd prefer if you didn't. <laughs> so what brings you to town if it's uh, not all the uh, fun out there? You spent more time in here, really. I'm here to make, not make trouble, but uh, I am ready to get some information about gods. Something I have not like thought about in a, while, in a long time. Yeah, people normally come here to not think about that. And where else would people be full of worship? <laughs> I feel like what my friend here is trying to say is that we're looking for a ship. We're looking for like a, a, a week's worth of travel. Oh, so you need a real ship, like captain and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you can ask around the bar. I think the uh, I think there's a guy over there that has a ship. He's been here a few days now, though. Uh, and he points to an older man sitting in the corner. We'll call him a dragonborn for fun. Uh, an older dragonborn man sitting in the corner drinking his sorrows. He also looks like he's had a very rough day and has had a few pints. And the bartender says, you can ask him, but I haven't seen any big ships come in lately. Hey, yo! Oh. Do you have a ship? <laughs> what? Do you have a ship? Are you yelling from, like, outside of the... <laughs> <laughs> like, peeping out the window. Hello? Hello? <laughs> yes, I've got a ship. What do you need a ship for? Oh, I was just asking. I was going to say, Jet's going to pop outside and grab Benny and Eve if, Eve if Eve is willing to enter the bar. What? What's happening? We're we're going inside? Uh, well, pickle shots. 
All right, let's do it. I'm down. Who, who else wants around? I'll, I'll, I'll get them. Don't worry. And <laughs> Benny walks up to the bar and orders pickle shots for everyone. Perfect. The bartender will pour pickle shots for everyone, and they will be just legit pickle shots. I've got no bubbles to add. Dill pickle. It's- yeah, right. it's not bread and butter. Specifically dill pickle. Specifically, because... She's never going to live that down. <laughs> oh, that was bad. Yeah, so you've got now pickle shots. Are you going to order one for your uh, maybe newfound ship man? Yeah. Benny will probably order two extra ones, and if nobody else drinks them, she'll give one to little Dilla and take the second one herself, if nobody else wants them. Yeah, Jettel, Jettel sneak it. Okay. She's Eve, not Tara, what are you guys doing? Are you are you coming in? You staying out? Uh, I mean, Tara will walk up to the bar, and I think with all the swords, it's like a clank, 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 clank. <laughs> I've got to write down the stealth. The stealth is not going to be Tara's thing. <laughs> <laughs> How's it ever been? Tara, disadvantage on stealth. She's invisible. How will we find her? Clank, 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 clank. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take a, a d6 of damage from all the swords cutting your legs. <laughs> There's just all these cuts on her knees now <laughs> Lord uh, Alright, so everyone's in the bar then And yeah, you can bring this pickle shot over to this old man Let's do it I don't know how you're approaching this man, he's, he's drunk Let's get this old man drunker I am so sorry to do this to you But this is, uh, it's called a pickle shot What? Okay, I'll take a pickle shot And he... Misses his mouth a little bit. Half of it goes down to one side of his mouth. The other half goes into his mouth. And he goes, oh, mm, that was good. Thank you. Death's going to do her shot, too. She's going to miss as well. She drank a lot on an empty stomach. And uh, she's going to be like, I think we are both, like, in the best mindsets to discuss business right now. Yes. <laughs> okay. The business. What do you, what do you, you need a ship? Where, where, where are you heading? <laughs> That's FYI. For your information, obviously. What? 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you need a ship, you're going to have to get my ship for me. My ship's been stranded. My first mate steered it into a monster lair. And if you can get me my ship back, I'll take you where you need to go. Oh, okay. And just out of curiosity, um, do you know anyone else that owns a ship that's not in a monster's lair? No. Okay. Great. My ship's called the Railroad. (laughs) 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 The SS, you have no choice. (laughs) I'll tell you where my ship is. Wait, wait. Before I, where, where are you going to go? Because I got to make sure that I'm willing to go there. We, we need to go to northeast. That's a direction. Yes, yeah, it is. How far northeast? <laughs> About a week. That's not a distance, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't expect you to know nautical terms. <laughs> It's about a week northeast. I know that island, of course. About about a week <laughs> about a week's worth of fish miles. <laughs> what? How many? <laughs> if you don't know where you're going, I can't quite help you. I'm, I can captain and navigate, but I have to have a destination. Well, we happen to have a compass that will direct us in that direction. Would you like to open it? Okay, I'm good at really? compasses. I someone ate that. Uh, Do you, Eve ha- has you don't it. have a compass anymore, though. I thought Eve ate it. Yeah, Eve ate the compass. Oh. We had the compass disintegrate and be like imbued in Eve. Oh God. Oh, I am the compass. Eve is the compass. Eve, Eve, Eve is, the is the compass. The compass. <laughs> so you see Eve like, walks onto the bar, literally just spreading its cheeks, lays open. down, and just planks in the direction of the island. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that way I know that island. Then okay. Yeah, sure. it, if you get like a large pool of, of salt water, he floats on his back and his head will point the direction. Yeah, you just got to give me a little twirl every now and again make sure I'm going the right way. <laughs> I forgot that Eve ate the compass. <laughs> I am the compass. Well, okay, well. I am thou, thou art I time. guess if you have a, a direction that you can lead me, then I'll, sure. Okay, well, my ship is about a half a day's walk um, that way. Oh, that's not or, a distance. It's about northeast for 30 fish. 
<laughs> you gotta go that way until you find a ship. It's that simple. It's a big ship, remember? It's called the railroad. Yeah, I feel like no matter which direction we walk, we're gonna wind up there anyway. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I'm just doing hi. I'll sober up for what I need to captain. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, yeah, we'll pick up on all of this next week. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming back 2021. Uh, find us all on rollgayroleplay.com. We have a link tree on all of our social media. And yeah, come join the Patreon. Come talk to us. Have some fun. I'm Chris the DM. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 How did you get to introduce, like, say, I'm Chris the DM, and you can't say, I'm Eve? Do you want to do the outros from here on out, Jonathan? You can do them. I'm just saying. I'm Jonathan. You can find me at St. Eve of Laurent everywhere. (laughs) Eugene (laughs) underscore J90. I am truly a designer, and I just play Jonathan (laughs) on this podcast. Lord. (laughs) Bitch. Join us in the Discord. <laughs> you can see our faces and show us yours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, okay, bye. bye. This worked great. Okay, bye, everyone. Bye. bye.